Well, thank you, everybody, for coming today. Um, glad that you're here to, to hear us talk a little bit about um, just ways that laboratories and clinics can work together. And there will be a little bit of technical information in our talk, but I promise we're trying to gear it towards things that will help you understand the benefits and limitations of different technologies in a clinical setting. Um, so the title of our talk today is Putting the Pieces Together, Clinical and Laboratory Collaborations to Solve the Diagnostic Puzzle. Um, and there actually will be three separate sessions. Um, the first is going to be an overview of the clinical applications of resequencing arrays, pyrosequencing, and next generation sequencing. Um, and then Amy, one of our other genetic counselors, will be talking about which DX can lead to a diagnosis, so some information about the different array technologies and deletion duplication technologies available. Um, and then um, Brad Williams will be talking about um, variants of unknown significance and things that laboratories do to try to delineate them, and also some tools that are available um, that you can use when, when a patient's been identified with a variant of uncertain significance. Um, just a disclosure, we all are employed by Gene DX, who's sponsoring the lunch session today. Um, so my name's Liz Butler, and I'm going to be talking about some of the newer quote-unquote sequencing technologies. I'm hoping that all of you are sort of aware of traditional Sanger dideoxy sequencing, so we're not going to focus on that, but some of the newer technologies that are available to give you similar information. Um, so I'd like you to imagine that you work in a general genetics clinic and you have a, um, four patients on your schedule today. So for many of you, this might seem like a light schedule. Um, the first patient is a seven-year-old male with mild to moderate intellectual disability or mental retardation, short stature, and a suspected diagnosis of cardiofacial cutaneous or Noonan syndrome. The second patient is an eight-month-old female with developmental regression, hypotonia, and lactic acidosis, and a possible diagnosis of Lee syndrome. Um, then it's lunchtime, which for most of us I think usually means clinic runs late, so you're catching up from the morning session, um, returning phone calls, and preparing for your afternoon patients. Um, in the afternoon, a 17-year-old female with dilated cardiomyopathy and a 32-year-old male with retinitis pigmentosa who's presenting for preconception counseling. So this seems like a very um, varied clinic schedule, and on the surface, these patients don't appear to have a lot in common. But I would argue that what they do have in common is that they're all presenting to you with genetic disorders that are heterogeneous. And so traditionally, there have been pretty limited genetic testing options available for patients for all of these different genetic disorders. The reason is that conventional DNA sequencing is pretty expensive when you talk about doing it for a large panel of genes or multiple different genes related to the same clinical presentation. Um, so to try to avoid the, the high cost of testing, often what you try to do is order these genes sequentially. So you start with what seems most likely and you work your way from there. But that significantly increases the time that your patients have to wait to get results. Um, in many cases, be it, for genetic disorders where there were a lot of different genes known to be associated with the same clinical presentation, you may not have even be able to get comprehensive genetic testing. So what was clinically available was often only testing for common mutations or testing for the most common genes. Um, and really, this led to a lot of frustration both among patients and among genetic counselors because our options in terms of clinical testing were pretty limited. So, there are some new sequencing technologies that are available to try to help us get around some of these issues. Um, Resequencing arrays, pyrosequencing, and next generation sequencing are three that we'll be talking about today. Um, the advantages is that you can do complete analysis of multiple different genes at the same time, or you can analyze for common mutations using a single assay. Um, so you don't have to set up as many different reactions and run each of these genes individually on a sequencer. You can do it all at the same time. This makes it much more cost effective, and it also reduces turnaround time. Um, so I like to think of traditional sequencing as being like the top zebra who's sort of casually making his way through the savanna, and some of our newer options are more like the group of zebras rushing their way through the water there at the bottom, and that's sort of, I think, a good way of thinking about the differences between these technologies. 
So let's start by talking a little bit about resequencing arrays. Um, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but many of you are probably familiar with the way that array technology works for whole genome oligonucleotide arrays or other arrays. Um, basically, this technology for resequencing arrays is pretty similar, but instead of looking at the entire genome, you actually start by PCR amplifying your genes of interest. Um, you fragment and label the DNA, you hybridize it to a chip, and then you scan it. And that's about as much detail as you probably need to know. Um, so this is an example of what the results would look like, and I'm going to walk you through it because I think it's very helpful in understanding the benefits and limitations of this particular technology. So what you see at the top is the particular base position. So this would be nucleotide one um, in your patient's particular DNA. And what actually is present on the array for each individual nucleotide is a... Um, a probe for A, G, C, or T. And when you put your patient's DNA onto the chip, it's going to hybridize to the complementary nucleotide. So in this case, you're seeing the signal lighting up in the lower right-hand corner here, um, which corresponds to a T, which means that your patient's base at that position is the complementary sequence, which is an A. Um, and so every single nucleotide position in your patient's DNA in their genes of interest um, can be analyzed this way, and it generates the sequence of your patient's DNA down here. Um, this is all done by analysis software, um, so this isn't something that anyone would manually be doing, but I think it just gives you an idea of how this technology actually works. 